I'm silly. And this you can hear me say. That was like classic. <laughs> Torchwood aren't actually very good at what they do, are they? Because They're like the Welsh X-Men. <laughs> 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 because, you know, they, they kind of spent three episodes going, if you just let us talk to the aliens, everything's going to be OK. And then the moment they spoke to the aliens, like, the next scene was just them surrounded by body bags. <laughs> I did like the Oops. fact that, that Captain Jack said, yeah, we will fight you and I will lead an army towards you. Three people died. He said, I take that back. Just... <laughs> <laughs> what kind of negotiations was that? Rubbish. Well, what did you make of Captain Jack? I mean, obviously, he's conveniently immortal. He does that thing when he comes back from the dead. He, he does that, he goes... <gasps> which, which, which is how I wake up, basically, every morning. <laughs> <laughs> the scary thing was that because he does that, it's because it's John Barrowman, Every time I see him go, <gasps> I think he's about to start singing. <laughs> um, I've got a little observation test. A little observation test for you. How many times do you think uh, Captain Jack Harkness died across the five episodes? OK, I'm going to go for five. Five times. OK, Frank. Oh, I was going to say five, but I'm going to go six. I'm going to walk it. Ten. Ten? Yeah. Let's take a look. No sign of trauma to the skin apart from bruising, but that's... <laughs> stupid about that was he's encased in concrete they drop him in a quarry and it just shatters uh, and then he just gets just dusts himself down it would all be in his eyes down his mouth up his ass he'd have to spend the next 10 minutes like with his penis on a table smashing it with a book <laughs> like that to try and get all the concrete out of his fucking piss pipe <laughs> uh, well done though Frank you guessed correctly six times one point to you fabulous <laughs> <laughs> Next week in TV Club, we'll be talking about Inside Nature's Giants, the Channel 4 animal autopsy series on Monday night at 9pm. I think we can see them here. Look, uh, cutting up a whale. Actually, that looks more like Inside Pavarotti. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Anyway, look at the website for all the details and let us know what you make of it once you've stopped being sick. <laughs> and at the end of that, I can reveal that Frank is still in the lead. <laughs> <laughs> Today may be the 10th anniversary of the first series of Big Brother, but a new reality show launched last week has stolen much of its thunder. It's called One and Other. It's a public art project and a TV show on Sky Arts. The action doesn't take place in Boreham Wood, but Trafalgar Square. Yes, everyone's talking about the fourth plinth. If you haven't seen it, here's what it is. One Another is an exciting art project come TV show which sees a different member of the public standing on the fourth plinth of Trafalgar Square for an hour on the hour every hour for 100 brilliant days. It's streamed live on the internet and wonderfully covered on the Sky Arts channel and it's already become a cult smash amongst the sort of person who likes to point and laugh at others, i.e. me. Some of the plinthers are promoting serious causes, some are zany attention seekers, and some are just downright scary. <laughs> There's also a lot of fancy dress, which makes it look a bit like the London Marathon for people who can't be asked with running, apart from him. Having withstood the elements, the boredom and the heckles... He's one day. Why not every day? There's a thrilling moment when the cherry picker comes along to replace one plinther with another. And on it goes for 100 days on TV and online. It's been a hit with art critics, reality TV fans and even this bloke. <laughs> <laughs> Frank, uh, were, you, were you actually looking at the plinth there or had you just witnessed a terrible road accident? <laughs> I was looking at the plinth. I'll tell you what happened as well. As I walked away, I got a phone call from my manager and he said, I've just seen you on the live coverage of the plinth, <laughs> which shows a little insight into how often I'm on television nowadays. 
<laughs> that was a cause of excitement for my manager. <laughs> No, I, I went a few times. I, I sort of live quite near it, so I, I got quite hooked on it, to be honest. I think it's the quintessential reality TV format. It's completely... I find it weirdly mesmerising, in the, in the same way that ten years ago you'd switch on the Big Brother live feed and it was just a novelty that you could see a bloke picking his ass in his kitchen. <laughs> so you just said, oh, look it, oh, oh, he's going to pick up a spoon. Oh, no, he's moving for the knife. Oh, no, they've taken that off him. It's going to be a terrible incident. <laughs> um, but uh, I think it's, it's, just, uh, it's just amazing that you can just sit there and, and watch it. It, it sort of, it's recaptured that eerie thrill. Is it, uh, what, what did you like about it? It's nice to be able to really stare at someone in London without getting stabbed. <laughs> Grace, you're a big fan of, oh, of God, reality shows. Are you glued to this? I absolutely bloody love it. I'm obsessed with it. I mean, after the first 80 or 90 hours, it gets a bit samey. <laughs> but, uh, no, I do. I just, think it's, I just think it's wonderful. It makes me think about how everything's accelerated in that um, I used to have to watch Big Brother for weeks to really hate someone, and now I can glance sometimes mm. at the film and think, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can piss off. <laughs> I liked when uh, Boris Johnson was talking about it and he went, we may have lost the people's princess, but we have the people's plinth. <laughs> I like the comparison of Diana and the plinth. She had a few strange people on top of her as well. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the plinthers have been sort of old-school entertainers. We've got a little clip here of somebody being brilliant up there. Come on. What was brilliant about him, I, I watched him mm -hmm. for the whole hour, and after he'd done all that, he read a poem about solitude. And I thought, <laughs> you probably know about that. <laughs> <laughs> they need a bit of an event, though. I mean, I I'd like to see Jordan and Peter Andre thrashing out their divorce settlement <laughs> for an hour. That would be great. I think they should just raise the plinth by a metre every hour for the full 100 days. <laughs> until by the end, it's bloody terrifying. <laughs> um, Josie, what would you do if you were up on the plinth? I, what, I, what I would do is probably just get to bed and have a little sleep. I love to sleep. <laughs> you just have a sleep? Oh, yeah. For an just, hour? Yeah, take up a duvet, take up a pillow and be like, see you all later. <laughs> Grace, what, what would you do? Um, well, I think I would probably just um, be topless or naked and I'd spray myself silver and because you need to look kind of some, you know, like a statue or something. If I was going to be a human statue, I'd be Saddam Hussein. And then I'd have some <laughs> friends pull me over with rope. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then I'd get a little bloke to come and hit me with a flip flop. <laughs> That's what you do? No, I, I think I'd dress as Napoleon and just go. <laughs> <laughs> at Nelson. <laughs> That's a very good suggestion. I think Frank has a point to you. Uh, when a housemate leaves Big Brother, they get a full post-eviction interview, but on one another, they just get picked up off the plinth by a cherry picker. That's not fair, so we've invited an actual plinther along tonight. She's in the audience there. Emma Phillips. Hello. Hello. I'm actually really I'm... quite excited. <laughs> you didn't know that was going to happen. No, that's no. Emma, Emma, I, Emma, I believe when you were up on the plinth, you threw paper aeroplanes yes, into the crowd. Yes, a crane. thousand paper planes with, with messages. messages. Messages inside. I know you divided the nation, but no matter what people think, you were a brilliant plinth, mate. Oh, thank you. Uh, so <laughs> let's take a look at some of your best bits. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I found, that, uh, I found that particularly moving because I'm a big fan of litter. <laughs> <laughs> Join us after the break when we'll be welcoming you back after the break. <laughs> Welcome back after the break. Now it's time for our final quick fire round in which any pretense of Bon Homie is jettisoned in favour of basic question and answer bullshit. <laughs> That's a nice light way of putting it. Uh, this bit's meant to be serious, so let's have a tension inducing game show sting. Daytime, daytime. <laughs> 
That is a c ringtone.